There was a time when hacking was all command lines, endless manuals, and mystery. But today, it feels almost like gaming. The tools are faster, the platforms are gamified, the missions more addictive, and the thrill unmatched. You open your terminal, step into a virtual battleground, and just like a game, your mind locks into the zone. Every action matters. Every scan, every exploit, every payload feels like a power move in a high-stakes digital world. But here's where it gets real. Games are built for entertainment. You win, you lose, you reset. Hacking, it's real-world consequences. You're not just chasing high scores. You're chasing vulnerabilities. You're exploiting logic, systems, and sometimes peoples. And just like in games, hacking has levels. Beginner, intermediate, advanced. But these aren't just skill checkpoints, they're transformations. As a beginner, you rely on tools you barely understand, just like spamming buttons in your first video game. As you level up, you start to see patterns, break logic, and build your own tools. And by the time you hit advanced, you're not playing the game anymore, you're rewriting it. In hacking, each level doesn't just test your knowledge, you, it tests your mindset, your patience, and how far you're willing to push the system. This isn't about XP. It's about evolution. You're not just beating a boss. You're breaking into firewalls, evading detection, staying invisible under pressure. You don't get extra lives here, just one shot. And every mistake could cost you more than points. Still, the similarities run deep. Just like a game, hacking starts with curiosity. Then comes the strategy, recon, scanning, planning. You look for weaknesses in the system the same way a gamer studies enemy patterns, searching for flaws, blind spots, or ways to outsmart them. You adapt your loadout, tools, scripts, exploits, just like customizing gear in a game. Every new system is a new map. Every firewall is a digital wall you need to scale. And when you finally break in, it's not just victory. It's proof that your mind, your method, your madness worked. But here's the catch. Unlike gaming, this victory can never be celebrated out loud. There's no leaderboard, no crowd cheering, just silence. And the next challenge, gaming gives you adrenaline. Hacking gives you obsession. And once you feel that rush, uh, the real world kind, the keyboard no longer feels like a controller. It feels like a weapon, just like games have levels. So does hacking. You don't just jump in and breach the fortress. You start small. You learn how to move. In the beginning, you're just pressing buttons, running scripts, copying commands, like a beginner gamer learning controls. This is the script kitty level where tools do the work and you don't fully understand the power you're holding. Then comes the second stage, understanding the system. Like mastering a new map in a game, you start learning how networks operate, how websites respond, how servers hide things in plain sight. The thrill here isn't just breaking in, it's figuring out how things work before you even try. The third level, exploitation. This is where you stop following walkthroughs. You begin seeing patterns, you start identifying vulnerabilities yourself. And that's when hacking becomes a puzzle, a hunt, a duel between you and the system. You're not just playing anymore, you're building your strategy, customizing your attack. You're leveling up, fast. And finally, there's the advanced level, where you become the threat that security professionals are trained to stop. You're writing your own tools, discovering zero days, staying anonymous. It's no longer just a game, it's warfare. But here's the twist. Unlike gaming, you don't unlock this level with XP. You unlock it with obsession, time, and grit. You earn it every step of the way. That's why platforms like Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, and Bug Crowd feel so much like games. But with real skill building baked in, Hack the Box throws you into a virtual playground filled with machines you can hack. Each one is like a boss battle. It has difficulty rankings, point systems, even badges. You climb leaderboards, unlock harder targets, and compete with other hackers around the world. But behind every exploit you pull off, there's a real technique being learned. It's learning disguised as war games. Then there's Try Hack Me. It guides you like a campaign mode, structured paths, tutorials, and challenges that walk you through web hacking, reverse engineering, and privilege escalation. Every room you complete is like clearing a level, and the satisfaction hits, just like winning a ranked match. And when you're ready for the real arena, you step into bug bounty platforms, where the challenges aren't simulations. They're live targets, real companies, real money. But the game design is still there. Leaderboards, rewards, rankings, 
You're still chasing the high score, but this time it's a payout and reputation on the line. These platforms aren't just training tools. They're games for the new warriors. And every click, every scan, every breakthrough makes you sharper. You're not just learning to hack. You're becoming part of the game. At first, hacking feels like a game. The dopamine hits, the victories, the chase. Just like gaming, you lose track of time, you obsess over progress, and you crave that next breakthrough. But here's the difference. Gaming lives in a sandbox. Hacking lives in reality. In a game, you're allowed to fail. You die. You restart. You lose a match. You queue up again. No harm done. But in hacking, one wrong move doesn't just mean game over. It means you're exposed. You leave a trail. You trigger alarms. You enter territory where the consequences are real, legal, digital, even personal. You're not fighting NPCs. You're challenging corporations, governments, and security teams trained to find you. And sometimes, you're not even the hunter. You're the bait. Games are built to be fair, but the digital world isn't. Some systems are built to trap you. Some bugs are honeypots. Some networks are rigged with logging tools that wait silently for someone like you to make a mistake. And while you're out there playing digital chess, someone else might be playing poker, bluffing, baiting, backdooring. That's the game you're really in. So yes, hacking feels like gaming, but it's a game with no rules, no pause button, and no guaranteed way out. In the end, hacking isn't just about breaking systems, it's about breaking limits, mental, digital, even personal. It feels like a game, but it's not. There are no cheat codes here, no save points, just skill, patience, and the willingness to go deeper than most ever will. You don't just level up with time, you evolve with obsession, and the moment you stop treating it like a game is the moment you start becoming something more. So if you're here just for fun, enjoy the ride, but if if you feel that fire in your chest, if you see the world as one giant puzzle begging to be solved, welcome. You're not just a gamer anymore. You're a thinker, a builder, a breaker, a hacker, and this is just the beginning. If this hit you, like, share it with someone chasing the same dream. Speak your mind in the comments. This space is for thinkers. Smash that subscribe, because what's coming next, you won't want to miss it. See you in the next one.